it becomes obvious in this conflict that Lancelot does not want to fight against Arthur or Gawain, and he says so much. And at one section, uh, Palamides says to him, look, you've got yourself into it. Even if you try to show mercy to these people, they will not stop until you're dead. It's a reality now. This whole feud is a reality, and we can't escape from it. And consequently, Lancelot has to engage in warfare where he's fighting these characters that he previously has been allies with and uh, begins striking them down. This civil war, in some ways, is a, a civil war which exposes the tragedy of uh, the disintegration of human society. We see a similar thing that occurs during the War of the Roses in England, and then later on during the Civil War that occurs in England in the 1600s. And then again, as a matter of fact, in America in the 1800s, where uh, men who had, f who had trained together at West Point in America, who had fought together in the, in the war in Mexico, who now were fighting one another on the fields of uh, Appomattox and the field of Bull Run and the, 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 the field of Gettysburg. And this tragedy, this awful sense that these men that I have been allied with are now going to die at my hands, I think is the, is the thing that affects Lancelot so much. And it really, it really is, the, um, in some ways, the fire that's purifying Lancelot's sense of the world. Up to this point, he has thought of nothing but fame and glory in, in, in a world that's, that's kind of static. It's perfect. It's, uh, everything's going well for Lancelot, and so he's the, he's the star of the whole team. And all of a sudden, the whole team is at jeopardy. It's at, they're fighting with one another, and, and you have to take sides, and you have to kill men that you have been... Uh, allied with up to this point. And so everything that he's seen as good and noble and true is being put at jeopardy here. And I think it's, it's purifying his vision of the world. Uh, he has to decide, what do I really love in this world? Well, it gets so bad that the Pope himself steps in and he sends a papal bull, a, a, a bulla it was called, a, a sheet of paper that had a stamp on the end of it, or a, a, a seal on the end of it. And in Italian, the seal is called a bulla. And so a papal bull is sent uh, to Arthur, says, look, accept Guinevere back, put an end to this fighting, too many good knights have, have died, stop right now. And when the Pope says that, especially during the age of Mallory, people listened. And so Arthur and Gowan cease making war on Lancelot at Joyous Guard. And Lancelot comes out and gives over Queen Guinevere in great state and pomp and ceremony, gives over Queen Guinevere to Arthur. And he says to Arthur, I don't want this war with you. But Arthur's adamant. He still says, you are a traitor knight, and, uh, and I will be obedient to the papal bull and not make war on you, but you are still a traitor. Get out of my sight. And it's at that point that Gowan steps in and says, although Arthur is stopping the war, I'm not going to stop the war. Wherever you go, I promise you I'll find you and I'll kill you. And uh, good to his word, uh, he, he follows Lancelot even after Arthur and Lancelot have made peace. He follows him and makes war on him. But Lancelot, I think, is at a point now where he is so willing to, uh, to do penance, to, to, to make amends, that he's willing to even shame himself. And he suggests to Gowan, I will, I will walk across England in my nightshirt. An embarrassing thing to do. I walk across England in my nightshirt and my bare feet and endure the hardships of nature and give away my money wherever I go if it will stop this war. I will give away my entire substance if it will stop this war. And he proposes this tremendous uh, act of penance, of establishing uh, monasteries and, and doing public uh, physical um, penance for what, what has gone on before this. But Gowan will not be placated. Once he's got his dander up, he's not... He is not willing to step down, and because of pride, he continues the war with Lancelot. So eventually, Lancelot gives over Guinevere to Arthur, and she's in now in the, in the care of her king, even though it's pretty frosty, I'm sure, between them. And Lancelot goes to his home in France. See, he's originally from French uh, lands, not from English, and his his home in England, Joyous Guard, is what he got originally when he was married to Elaine. And that's where he's been fighting against uh, Arthur and, and uh, Gowan up to this point. So he leaves Joyous Guard and he goes to France. 
And it's, uh, it's Gowan that pursues him there and continues this war in France. And what this does is it splits the force of Arthur. He's already lost a lot of knights in this civil war, but now Lancelot and Gowan are both gone from England. And lurking in the dark, lurking in the corner, is that mischief maker, Mordred, who wants only power, who wants only to control things. And at this point he sees an opportunity and the, 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 the throne of Arthur is unprotected because his best knights have gone over there to France to fight with one another. Thank <laughs> you.